In Hellraiser Hellworld, gamers playing an MMORPG based on the Hellraiser films find their lives endangered after being invited to a rave, the host of which intends to show them the truth behind the Cenobite mythos. Welcome to Box of Chocolates, where you never know what you're going to get. Today we're continuing the Hellraiser review series. I've been going through this whole franchise for the first time, reviewing them all along the way, leading up to the new one. And at the time I'm recording this, we just got a trailer for that new one, and it actually looks pretty good. I'm getting excited. But for now, we're still sludging through the direct-to-DVD, not really a Hellraiser, Hellraiser movies, with the eighth one, Hellworld. This is all just going to be my own opinion, of course, if you've seen Hellworld. Whatever you thought of it, leave it down in the comments below so we can talk about it down there. I'm going to go into detail, I'm going to go into spoilers and talk about this. Still probably won't be a super long review, though, because there's not a lot to say, because... Let me just say that with these straight-to-DVD ones, they haven't been good. I wouldn't recommend them, I wouldn't rewatch them, but they haven't been the worst. They've had some good ideas in them, and they haven't been as bad as I thought they would be. This one is the level of quality I was expecting the entire time. We finally got there. Unfortunately. This was directed by Rick Bota, the same as the last two. Released in 2005, the same year as the last one. I believe since they were filming Seven in Romania, there was something contractual to film there, to where they were forced to film another one too, I think. <laughs> so we're already in Romania. Let's take this short story that exists, turn it into a Hellraiser script, make that a movie, pump it out on DVD the same year as Hellraiser Debtor, and oh my god, I watched Halloween Resurrection, Jeepers Creepers Reborn, and this all in the span of two days. And let me fucking tell you, I needed a break. This is the last one featuring Doug Bradley. That's it. Good job, Doug. You put on a hell of a performance through all of those movies that did not deserve you, even though you're only in some of them for like a minute and 40 seconds. You always delivered. You clearly cared. It'll be a shame not having him anymore, but he can take a nap now. It's a shame that he went out on this one because this is easily the worst one to me so far. I don't know what's coming next. <laughs> and uh, he doesn't even have any like cool memorable lines or anything, but it's probably for the best. Get out, Doug. Run while you can. There's something you could have done with these meta elements of these people playing a Hellraiser game and thinking that it's all fictional. It's kind of a weird idea. It's kind of stupid. Doesn't really fit at all. But there is something you could have done with that. I thought they were going to get sucked into the game or something, but what we actually get is no story whatsoever for the majority of this thing. The majority of this is these characters just wandering around this mansion. It's odd similarities between this and Halloween Resurrection, and they both belong so strongly at the bottom of their respective franchises. <laughs> These characters are just walking around this house with occasional nudity, occasional random sex scenes, and these characters that I don't care about in the slightest. There's a certain novelty seeing Henry Cavill in this, so young. That was kind of interesting. Lance Henriksen is cool. It's great to have him. He was originally being considered for the role of Frank in the first movie. He didn't take it. He did Near Dark instead. So it's kind of cool that he finally got to be in Hellraiser, but you went from the top to the very bottom. <laughs> and I do like Catherine Winnick. I think she's fine enough in the main role, but overall the acting is fine. It'll do the job well enough. Nobody's outstanding. And these characters are very bland for the most part. Henry Cavill's just obnoxious. They're just wandering around this mansion. There's nothing of interest happening. There's a little bit of reality bending where you're questioning what's real and what's not, and that can be an interesting element. I usually like that in a lot of horror thrillers, but here there's just nothing to grasp onto because once again, it feels so divorced from what Hellraiser actually is. The, the issue with this, making these non-Hellraiser stories Hellraiser, is that I'm not sitting there wondering, I wonder what the answer to the mystery is. Let me invest in the characters and I wonder what will happen with them. When you insert Pinhead, that is just inevitably going to be a huge question on my mind. My mind goes from what is happening with these characters to what is happening with Pinhead. What do the Cenobites have to do with any of this? And it's usually like a loose, weird 
connection that feels shoehorned in, and so it's never even satisfying. And you feel that here more than ever. This feels the least like a Hellraiser story compared to any of the previous ones. So I'm like, what the hell do the Cenobites have to do with this? And you have things like Pinhead personally wielding a knife and decapitating a man, and you're like, what? How is this Pinhead? How is this Hellraiser? So my experience watching this is wondering, why does this exist? How in the world are you trying to incorporate Pinhead into something like this? Watching these characters that I don't like wandering around doing nothing while obnoxious rock music plays the entire time. As far as creativity with the new Cenobites, there's one who has like two pieces of black tape around his head or like a belt or something. That's how creative they got with that. There are some kills in here. They get a little bit bloody. I'll give it that. It's the mid 2000s. I think they were starting to be influenced by things like Saw. So there's a couple moments in there. It's like, well, she got torn up real good. At least there's that. So once again, it's a movie that on its own is really bad because there is just no plot. There's no character. There's nothing of interest happening the entire time. And then when you shoehorn in Pinhead, it not only becomes a bad movie, but a bad movie that feels horribly confused. And that just adds in a whole new layer of being unable to care what's happening. And you get to the end of the movie, and it turns out it literally isn't a Hellraiser movie. Actually, because all that stuff with the Cenobites was fake. They were all buried alive hallucinating all of it, which admittedly, in another movie, could be a really cool idea. I was caught off guard by that. I thought, okay, that's kind of interesting. But also, I end up annoyed because I'm like, so all that shit, all the boring shit that I had to sit through throughout this fucking mansion wasn't even real. You could have created anything you wanted because it was all fake and you created something so boring. And they don't even stick to it. I would have respected them more if they just stuck with that. In this context, in this situation, the Cenobites and Pinhead weren't even real or weren't even involved, but of course they have to do the most predictable. Actually, Pinhead shows up and gets Lance Henriksen at the end, and who cares? Actually, now that I think about it, with Lance Henriksen involved and it was all about revenge for his son, it's less Pinhead and more pumpkin head, isn't it? Guys, like I said, there's just not much to say about this. I didn't care for these characters. They're wandering around doing absolutely nothing. It is so ill-fitting as a Hellraiser movie. Couple good moments of blood in there, a twist that's okay, but the way it's implemented is just not interesting in the slightest. This one is just, they had nothing. They had nothing to work with. They had no story here. They just had to pump out another one, throw it on DVD, get people to slop it up, and I hated watching it. That's all I have to say about that. If you've seen Hell World, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Do you actually like it more than me? Do you agree that this is as far as it's sunk so far? I don't know what the next ones are gonna be like, but this was really bad as far as I'm concerned. Leave your thoughts, leave a thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more from me. More Hellraiser is coming, Halloween, other movies new and old of all kinds. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you for the next one.